Hey, nose tackles. So you've got your handout about your basic skills that I need you to be able to do. And I wanted to go over them a little bit on the board to see if I could make it a little bit clearer for you. So your position is indicated here with the N. As nose tackle, you're always going to be lined up between the guard and the center. You could be left or right, depending on what the defensive call is. So your main responsibility is to occupy this gap. So that means on the snap of the ball, we need you to get your body here. We would like you to have your helmet to the closest sideline so that you're able to force any blocking or you're able to force any running to go into the middle of the field. Now from there, now watch number 97 here from Steinbeck. Not particularly a large defensive tackle, but I want you to watch the way he's going to get into his gap and he's just going to occupy the gap. Okay, so it's a pass play, and he's just doing gap control, which means he's holding that middle. That's the position we need you to get into. Now, obviously, we would like a pass rush of some kind if you could, but even if you're unable to get a pass rush and we're just occupying that great gap, this is really a good look. Here's one of their defensive tackles. Here's the other one. They've reestablished the line of scrimmage. And they're creating a nice big wall there. There, the offense could do one of three things. You're going to be so close that you're not going to be able to see them in order to read them. But you're going to need to be able to react to these kind of blocks. Here's the first block you might see. You might get a reach block. If you get a reach block, then that means this player is trying to reach to your outside to hook you. You have to be able to get into the gap and fight off that player. Now, I've drawn it up with the center reaching you, but the guard could also reach you too. But if that guard is trying to reach you, then that means they're running to the other side of the field. And even if your head is on the opposite side of where they're running, they really can't hurt us too much as long as you're in their gap. So, number one, you got to get into that gap. And when players try to reach around you, either from the left or the right, you have to be able to fight that off. Now, your second skill is a pretty common thing that you're going to see. You need to be able to control that gap, just like with the reach block. But a basic play that Canadians like to run is called inside zone. And on inside zone, the center and the guard will double team you. So that means two players are trying to defeat you. And this is why when we work on our skills, excuse me, the techniques to go with these skills, you have to control that gap low and hard. You cannot stop your feet because they will put two guys on you and their job is just going to be to push you backwards. If you are not low to the ground and coming with your feet moving, you could get run over. So not only for what we need to happen with the defense, but your own safety, you must, must, must be in a low stance to the ground. Finally, the third skill I need you to be able to have is rushing the passer. Now, as you get across the line of scrimmage and you control that gap, you may find that they're not reaching you. You may find that they're not double teaming you. You may find that they've actually taken a step back. And they're setting up like this. That means it's a pass play. And from there, we need you to rush the passer. And you need to rush that passer in a straight line, forcing him into the defensive ends. Now, there may be times when the offense is in an obvious passing down, and Coach Lucier looks over and starts doing this. That means that we are on an automatic pass rush. 
You do not have to worry about getting reached or getting double teamed. You're just going. Finally, the last skill that we need you to have is you have to be able to finish tackles. And in finishing these tackles, you may never, ever, ever get unnecessary roughness penalties. That means face masking. That means a horse collar. That means hitting out of bounds. Any of those penalties are just you using poor technique. We're going to spend a lot of time working on our tackling techniques. And if you get an unnecessary roughness penalty, that really means that you were either lazy or you didn't put enough effort into the tackle to get into a good place so that you don't have to grab a face mask, don't have to grab a horse collar, don't have to hit the guy when he's out of bounds. All right, nose tackles, those are your skills.